Hi everyone! In this video, I'd like to take a look at the Somagashira coupling reaction as requested by a viewer. So in this particular case, what we're going to do is do a broad overview of the reaction and how you would predict product for it. So if we take a look over here, you'll see that this reaction is pretty similarly set up to the Heck reaction. One big difference is that this reaction includes a copper co-catalyst. Now this co-catalyst is really important because what it allows for is for the conditions to be much less extreme than in the Heck reaction. So we can do an alkylation in this reaction at room temperature. That makes this particular mechanism and reaction very, very favorable and something that's researched heavily in labs. So that can mean that there's going to be a lot of variation in what you'll see up here, so we're going to talk about a few of the things that you should be aware of when you're looking at one of these reactions. So first of all, most often if you were to look at a general description of this reaction, you'll see that that is called an aryl halide or a vinyl halide. So it can be aryl, it can be vinyl for that R group, and it can also be heteraryl, also called heteroaryl, which just means you have an aryl ring with some kind of alternate to carbon in there, like nitrogen. The X is most often going to be iodine or bromine. It can also be chlorine. Sometimes you'll see it's also triflate or trifluoromethyl sulfonate. Now this one is not often, but it does happen, so just be aware that that is a group that you can use in this reaction. The next thing is you're going to be reacting it with some kind of terminal alkyne. Remember, we are doing an alkynylation. So with this R group attached to it, we're going to have it be aryl, hetaaryl, or it can be alkyneal. There has been a lot of research where we've also had that be an alkyl group, or it can be an organosilicon. So just realize that we can expand beyond and include things that may not often be seen in uh, your textbooks. Then what we're going to look at over here is everything that's added to the reaction to make these two actually join. So what we see is we have a palladium catalyst, so I put PDLN. That's because sometimes it's PDL2 and sometimes it can be PDL4. So understand that the number of ligands attached to your palladium can vary. Most often we're looking for a 14 electron system over here. And that L can be a phosphane group, it can be the solvent, some kind of amine. There's a lot of options for what that ligand will be. We also here have our copper 1 salt. Most often we'll see copper iodide. And then we have a base in the reaction that winds up being pretty important. And that is typically some kind of amine, though you can have TBAF, you can have DMSO, you can have a lot of other things that are put in that section. So now, if you're predicting product, what you'll do is, essentially, we're going to have this group here, it's going to lose the X. And this group here is going to lose that H, which is why the base actually becomes really important because it's going to be able to be part of the reaction to pull that hydrogen off. And so what's going to happen is you're removing this and you're removing that and you're going to join R1 directly to that C. So your final product that you get out is this one here, where now this group has had an alkylation happen to it and we have now added that triple bond. So those are some of the details you want to know about it and that's how you predict product. 